everybody. It's the Mellow Man, and we have got an amazing performance for you. We talked about bringing in talent. Well, we have it here in a couple of our staff members. Here to do a duet for two violins and piano, first, mo first movement per lydium, by Dmitry Shostakovich, is Joe Tovar from Turlock High School and Dutcher Middle School, and Beverly Vanderlinen from Walnut Elementary. Thank you for sharing with us, guys. It is a treat. Enjoy, everybody. So this is uh, Mr. Saki again from Turlock High School. Um, in the last video, um, we talked a little bit about how kind of COVID-19 affects your um, immune system, your lung cells. However, um, I wanted to build off that and kind of now discuss a little bit about how, how your body itself starts to develop an immunity towards COVID-19 to ultimately make you feel better um, if you happen to contract the virus. So um, you all have probably heard of the, these little particles that float around in your bloodstream called antibodies. So those are a key factor and we're gonna talk about those today. Okay, so um, basically the goal of today is to figure out how the body itself develops that immunity against specifically COVID-19. So um, generally speaking, when infected, when an individual is infected with a new illness um, or a pathogen, like a bad guy basically, think of it that way, um, the goal for your body is to build antibodies as quickly as possible. The question is now, what are antibodies? What do they do? What's their purpose? Um, are they themselves the ones that kill off the bad virus or is it something else? And so we're going to figure that out today. Okay, so let's just say, suppose you get coughed on. And so as you can see over here, this guy, uh, let's pretend that this guy in the blue sweater happens to have, unfortunately, COVID-19 coughs on this, um, um, this other person over here and they contract, unfortunately, COVID-19. Okay, so it enters their lungs. And in the last video, we kind of talked a little bit about um, how the virus itself, um, what it does is it hijacks your lung cells and it turns them into factories that breed replicas, in other words, copies of um, multiple COVID-19 viruses that go and then where, what they do is they ex escape the cell, they enter other cells, they continuously make more and more copies and, um, and then continuously make and infect other cells and the cycle kind of just repeats um, until the goal is to infect every cell in your body. But your body is much smarter than that and it, and it quickly stops it. 
Um, and by quickly, this is the term quickly is relative. Um, assuming your immune system is relatively okay, it can take anywhere from, um, I mean, the earliest onset would be about a week, but usually it's gonna take about two weeks. And so we'll figure that out. Okay, so what happens? So your cells are now factories. What they do is they make tons and tons of copies of COVID-19 in your lungs. And that's not good because all your, your own cells are basically contributing to making more and more viruses because that's what COVID-19 does. It hijacks your cells replication system. So that's bad, right? So here's an example. Here's one of your cells and here's the virus that enters the cell, in, inserts its RNA, um, RNA becomes replicated and looky, look here, bunch of COVID-19s um, come popping out. So that's not good. Um, okay, so what happens is um, your immune system recognizes this. It knows that it now realizes, hey, there's something that's invading me. It's making multiple copies. I got to stop it. So um, it begins to mount a response. Um, the first guys, the kind of like troops that come to the forefront would be are called macrophages and neutrophils. These are cells. They're basically like first responder, responders. Think of them as like maybe the fire truck guys or the police or maybe the EMT ambulance, you know, the guys that, that drive the ambulance. Um, they're the first ones to, you know, come to the, the site of whatever the heck is wrong with you. So they try to kill the infected cells because your cells are, you know, now have become factories of COVID-19 um, virus particles. Um, however, the virus is infecting way too many cells at way too fast a rate. Your cells are dying, which therefore means you're going to feel sick because your cells are dying, right? Your body is trying to convert all these resources to fight this infection. Um, but it's, it's happening way too quickly. Um, so as you can see here in this diagram, these little first responders are trying their best to come, but it's kind of too late. The cell uh, is already making way too many copies of the virus. Okay, so now what? And also another issue is the neutrophils and macrophages, they at times do not know who to kill. Do I kill this? Are, you know, they don't know if this cell is infected or not. So they can come to your lungs and they tr they want to try to kill the all the cells that are infected, but they don't know what's good. They don't know what's bad. So they get confused. So they start killing off your healthy cells that are not infected, and that's not good either, right? So um, your body wants wants to develop a system to basically try to um, target only the infected cells, so so that only infected cells are killed and your healthy cells stay alive. And so we're going to talk about what is that system and how that happens, and it does involve, and I'm sure you guessed it, uh, antibodies. Okay, so at this point, your cells are dying way too quickly, um, so you're sick, right? And um, what happens is there's this player called the dendritic cell. Um, a dendritic cell is basically like a messenger. What it does is it takes a piece of the COVID-19 virus, and it then takes that piece, puts it on its surface of the cell, and then from there, it travels to your lymph nodes. So... As you can see in this diagram, you have tons and tons of lymph nodes throughout your body. Um, the majority will be in your throat over here in your neck, um, in your armpit area, and then in the almost like near the groin area. So your lymph nodes have a purpose. Um, basically, your lymph nodes are, are one of the key responders for your immune system. Um, inside of your lymph nodes are, in, in this case anyway, two main cells. They're called helper T cells and B cells. So those guys are super important because B cells are what make antibodies. And so the point is that the dendritic cell takes that piece of the virus, the COVID-19 virus, transports it to the lymph nodes, and from there, your body will start making antibodies, which is good news, right? So the dendritic cell then travels to your lymph nodes. The problem is this part takes about a day um, and presents the antigen, which is the piece of the COVID-19 virus, presents it to the helper T cell. So this part happens in your lymph nodes. Okay, so then what happens? So the helper T cell, remember, it just got presented a piece of COVID-19. It takes that piece of COVID-19, and then it travels, takes it to your B cells. Your B cells are the ones that make antibodies. So B cells create antibodies. They become activated, they duplicate, so your B cells start making copies of themselves. Then they transform into no longer being called B cells. They're now called plasma cells. Plasma cells, are basically B cells that have been transformed into this new awesome stage, and they are factories of antibodies. So this process does occur in your lymph nodes as well. You have lymph nodes in your in the chain of your neck over here, 
Um, usually your lymph nodes get swollen when you're sick. So when you are sick, um, you go to a, let's say you go to a doctor and um, for a doctor's visit. Sometimes what the doctor will do, if you, especially if you have a sore throat, if you, you may have a flu or something like that, what they'll do is they'll take their hands, they'll put them against your neck over here, and they'll kind of feel to see if your lymph nodes are swollen. Because if they're swollen, that means that your B cells, which are being turned into plasma cells, in your lymph nodes are working, trying to create an antibody. And if they're swollen and they're making antibodies, that means that you're sick. So it's basically your doctor's checking, okay, let me see if you're really sick. They touch you, they palpate is what it's called. They touch your throat area and then they, they determine, oh, if your lymph nodes are swollen, you're probably sick making antibodies. Okay, so that's what the doctor is looking for. Okay, so now we know that the B cells are making antibodies. The only issue is this process can take a very, very long time. It depends on the infection, depends on the bacteria or the virus. But in this case, because it's COVID-19, it can take almost two weeks or more in some cases. Um, so the antibodies are being produced, they're very specific. They only target COVID-19 infected cells. That's their goal. That's it. No other virus, only COVID-19, which is good, right? That's what we want to get rid of. So your um, body, your neutrophil, so you have cells in your body, we talked about them earlier, neutrophils, macrophages, and killer T cells. Those are the guys that are confused. They don't know who to kill. Their goal is to get rid of infected cells, okay? but they don't know which cells are infected and which cells are not infected. So let's say here's a macrophage. His goal is to eat up and destroy any infected cell. He goes to this cell, lung cell, not, is not sure if it's healthy, is not sure if it's infected, kind of asks it, hey, are you infected? And then the lung cell, you know, obviously they don't really speak, but pretty much replies, you know, I don't know, you tell me. So the macrophage is now confused, right? But then the antibody, so after two weeks, your body, your B cells have finally produced all these antibodies that go around and they flush and saturate your entire bloodstream, especially in whatever area that's infected, such as your lungs. And they surround your lungs, the antibodies, so they look like the Y-shaped things are antibodies. They surround your lungs and they say, hey, look here, this is an infected cell. Hey, macrophage, come kill this cell. And the macrophage, macrophage basically says, oh, thank you. Now I know that you're an infected cell. And uh, it goes, ha, ha, I knew it, I'm gonna eat you now. So basically, what do antibodies do? They are specifically targeting only COVID-19 infected cells. And from there, that allows your first responders, your macrophages, your neutrophils, your killer T cells to kill, get rid of, using enzymes, only infected cells, not your healthy cells, because you don't you're, you don't want your immune system to kill your healthy cells. You only want your immune system to kill your um, targeted cells, right? Your COVID-19 infected cells. So that's uh, kind of the idea. Um, that's how your antibodies help um, your immune system in killing off whatever cells are infected. So the key point here is that antibodies themselves don't necessarily are not necessarily the the um, molecules that kill off whatever isn't being infected like a virus like COVID-19. Rather, they are kind of like signs to help target the, the players that do actually kill the cells off, such as neutrophils, macrophages, and killer T cells of your immune system to be able to recognize and kill off uh, whatever infected cell. So the process of being recovered from COVID-19 usually takes the median number at the moment. Um, I was Googling it earlier for the United States is about two weeks. And I compared this data to both Italy and to China. Um, however, this, this is just a median number, right? It's a smack down somewhere in the middle. Um, it's not an average. It's a median. There's a difference. Um, so it could take a little bit shorter. If you have a really good immune system, it might take a little bit shorter. It just kind of depends of uh, a couple factors such as your um, your health and your genetics, and then it can take a couple days longer, or it can be even longer if your immune system is impaired, if you happen to have some sort of autoimmune um, issue. Um, so it could take three to six weeks even in some cases, especially critical severe cases. So that's kind of the idea. That is how your body responds to being infected with a virus such as COVID-19 and uh, gets rid of it. So I hope uh, you guys found that helpful. All right, everyone. Thank you to TUSD TV. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jared Jeffries, and I'm a teacher at Turlock High School. And so I wanted to do something fun with you today, um, tangentially English related. So I thought that maybe we could write a slam poem 
together. And so you may not have a lot of experience with slam poetry. Uh, it's pretty accessible and actually it's pretty fun. And so um, if, if you're not familiar with the slam poem, it's basically a poem that is meant to be performed. Um, it's not meant to just be read on a page. It's meant for someone to actually speak it, usually live to an audience. And I wanted to pull some examples, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get YouTube onto this PowerPoint. So you're gonna have to suffer and I'll read to you an excerpt from one of my favorite slam poems. Marshall Jones writes, doubled over, we used to sit in treetops till we swung down and stood upright. Then someone slipped a disc. Now we are doubled over at desktops from the Garden of Eden to the branches of Macintosh. Apple picking has always come at a great cost. iPod, iMac, iPhone, iChat. I can do all of these things without making eye contact. We used to sprint to pick and store blackberries. Now we run to the sprint store to pick blackberries. It's scary. I can't hear the sound of mother nature speaking over all this tweeting. And along with it is our ability to feel as it's fleeting. So you can see that with a slam poem, it's uh, very rhythmic and it's almost like rap, uh, except that it's done without music. All right. So if you're interested, let's write one together. You only got to answer seven questions and you too can write your own slam poem seven questions that's all it takes all right here we go if you have a piece of paper um, you could be writing these things down if not you could just type it on your phone pretty short answers to these seven questions so the first question name a favorite childhood object so if you had a one-eyed bunny or a toy fish or a snow globe from boston um, you can have a few words three or four words is okay but it needs to be one single thing. So it cannot be plural. It needs to be one single thing. So when I was a kid, I had a plastic ride on airplane, uh, not exactly like the one pictured in this presentation, but basically it was something that I, I rode around in the front yard when I was a kid. And uh, I couldn't, like many kids, I didn't know all the words that I was using as a kid. So I said air pain instead of airplane. So my mom always jokes with me that I'd, I'd ride around the yard saying air pain, air pain. And so that's one of my childhood objects. So you write down your childhood objects. Um, you can always pause this and think about it, come back to it later if you need a second to think. All right, question two, what's an object that you associate with your mom or another loved one? Um, so try to do just two words. So elegant, elegant's a, another word for fancy, uh, elegant briefcase. If your mom had maybe an office job, red apron, if your mom spent a lot of time cooking or baking, messy bun, if your mom spent a lot of time waking up and putting her hair into a messy bun. And you know, this could also be a sister or an aunt or a grandma, really anybody. It, I think it helps if it's a woman, but it uh, doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, but don't list her job, just something associated with her that really sticks out in your mind. So my mom wore a lot of big sundresses with a lot of bright colors. Um, and so for me, my example, flowy sundress. When I think about my mom, I think about big flowy sundresses. Question three, well, what about dad, right? Um, so think about your dad or another loved one and what thing do you associate with him? And also this could be a brother, an uncle, a grandpa. Um, and then using a few words, uh, the examples are business class boarding pass, old t-shirt, can of cashews. Does anybody eat cashews anymore? I can't remember the last time I had a cashew. Um, name the physical concrete thing, not some abstract concept, okay? So for me, my dad wears this day glow sweatshirt all the time. He likes to ride his bike around town. If you live in Turlock, you may have even seen him. He's recently retired and he rides his bike around all day. Well, he, he wears, he says, he wears this day glow sweatshirt so that people can see him while he's riding his bike, but I think he just likes it. Um, I think it's just kind of his style. And so literally 85 to 90% of the time, and it drives my mom crazy, 90% of the time, my dad is wearing a day glow sweatshirt like that. So I'm gonna choose the day glow sweatshirt as my object. Question four, name your favorite character from a well-known children's story or movie. So I threw out a few examples, Moana, Aladdin, either the old one or the new one. And then uh, I know I'm going to start out a war here. Is it Hermione or Hermione? I always get called out no matter which one I do from Harry Potter. For me, my current favorite is, I think I might sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. I apologize. 
My current favorite character right now is Hector from Coco. So if you guys have seen Coco, I won't give too much away, but he's an awesome character. I very much related to him uh, throughout the story. And so if you haven't seen Coco, I recommend it. Question five, what is your favorite animal that have you've never actually had as a pet? So you don't want to write something like Peaches, my cat, or um, Samson, my dog, or Teddy, my goldfish. Uh, you need the actual type of animal and it needs to be an animal that you've never actually had. So if any of you have actually been in my classes, you probably already know that the capybara is my favorite animal. It's the world's largest rodent from Brazil. And it's just a beautiful, uh, I think it's cuddly, a beautiful, cuddly, cuddly, really, really cute little creature. And um, there's a picture one for you. So my favorite animal all the way and my spirit animal is the capybara. All right, question six. List three adjectives or phrases that are describing you right now. They don't need to all be physical or emotional, maybe a mixture. Don't brag, be honest. What do you like right now? Well, for me, I'm a little stressed out because I got told that I need to make all my classes online uh, in about the course of a week. So, you know, I'm feeling the pressure to kind of change things in a, in a big, big way right now, but I'm surviving. I'm also grateful and hopeful though. I see um, good things that are coming. Uh, our way in the future. And I always try to remain positive. So I'm going to think about the things that I do have and that I'm grateful for. And I'm going to believe and I'm going to choose to believe that things are going to continue to get better in the future. All right. So you write down your three adjectives. Lastly, this one's tricky. What is something that scares you? And in a sentence or two, describe a scene that terrifies you. Write a short description of it. So for me, this has always been my biggest fear. I'm all excited because I go down to the Bahamas or to Mexico or to some coastal place with warm water. And I agree to go out on a boat to go scuba diving. Not hardcore scuba diving like a mile underwater, but just, you know, put on a snorkel and go look at the fish and the reef and stuff like that. And I'm going to get all the way out into the ocean. And eventually there's going to be no more land anywhere in sight. And they're going to get me off this boat and I'm going to swim around. And when I come back to the surface of the water, the boat's going to be gone. And I'm going to literally be stranded out in the water and I will literally freak out in terror in a way that I can't imagine anything being worse. I don't think anything scares me more than that. So take a second to think about what scares you, write it down, and then that's it. You wrote a slam poem. Pretty fun, right? No, of course not. I'm going to give you a little bit of a template to plug those things into. So um, here is the template. You plug in your stuff uh, for number one. I was born in the year of the, plug in your number one. My mother was a, plug in your number two, and you can change mother, obviously, to aunt, grandma, sister, et cetera, whatever you need to change it to. And my father was a, plug in your number three, obviously, you can change father. Number four, is it any wonder I grew up a cross between a blank and a blank? You take four and five and plug them in there. Take a long, hard look at me. I am blank, blank, and blank. You plug in your three adjectives for number six, and then for number seven. Is it any wonder that at night I still sometimes have nightmares about blank, all right? And so if you've read any slam poetry or watched any slam poetry, if you have access to YouTube during our, our break um, from being in a physical classroom, uh, you, can, you can check out a lot of slam poetry on YouTube. I encourage you to. It kind of has a cadence. Uh, and by cadence, I mean it kind of has a way of uh, a particular way that you say it. So I'm going to read you mine in just a second, and then you can practice reading yours, all right? Mr. Jeffrey Slam poem, here we go. I was born in the year of the plastic airplane. My mother was a flowery sundress and my father a day glow sweatshirt. Is it any wonder I grew up a cross between Hector from Coco and a capybara? Take a long, hard look at me. I am stressed out yet hopeful and grateful. Is it any wonder that at night I still sometimes have nightmares about being left in open water by a scuba boat. So hopefully you had a good time making a slam poem and we will be out here on TUSD TV. Thanks for listening and watching. Hello everybody, it's the Mellow Man back again and we are asking for your help. We are looking for performers out there. Do you have a talent? We want you to share it with us here on TUSD TV. If you can sing a song, share it with us. If you can dance, share it with us. We want to see what kind of talent is out there in Turlock, folks. And we want to bring it to you live right here 
on TUSDTV. Have a great day. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Rachel Cross and I run a program called Art from the Heart. Um, with Art from the Heart, everything is done with a point and a purpose and so everything that I will bring to create um, will have a theme to it. Um, I have studied art, I have an art degree and I am certified in a form of therapeutic art that I do in Turlock District and with other school districts inside of Stanislaus County. And it's all about positivity and just having fun. Uh, the activities I bring will be geared towards all ages, and you can even do it as family projects, which I definitely encourage. Um, this is a great opportunity for you to explore these things uh, with your child, your teen, however old they are, and just um, have fun with it. So today what I brought is a project called Personal Needs Flower. Now you do not have to do a flower if you do not want to do a flower. With Art From The Heart, you always have the opportunity to create any way that you would like. There's never a wrong way to do these activities. The main focus is just doing it and kind of thinking about what the themes are and, and looking within and being mindful of where we're at right now. Definitely, um, I felt that doing a personal needs flower was great for everything that we are going through at this time. Um, I know for myself, different needs have popped up. Like, I didn't know how much I really needed my phone and internet and Wi-Fi so I can stay in contact with friends and family that I have across the United States and even some here locally in town that I'm not able to see right now. And so um, this is a beginning sample of different of what we will be creating to today. This is my form of the flower and I will walk through the steps on how to create this. But I do also have samples of, um, this is from a young teen that did not wanna do a flower. So she created her own character that represented her and she put the specific needs of what she felt she needed right now um, around the character. I also have collage. I personally love collaging. All the words do the speaking for me and I don't really have to write it or have the pressure to create something. Um, this is a sample of a collage that, that I have made uh, in regards to the, the personal needs where I'm at right now. So thinking about personal needs, I know for me the first one that came up was phone, um, friends, um, socialization, water, safety, keeping safe right now, and some other deeper things were trust, love, and acceptance. And those are things that I find deep down that I, that I need. So what I did first was I made a list of what my personal needs are right now. So again, I have the food, water, shelter, phone, internet, um, friends, I need art. Um, downtime, and again, looking even just a little bit deeper within, I need tolerance right now. I need to be tolerant over what the situation is right now. I have a lot of things that I cannot control. So with that, I also find that I need acceptance and patience. And I know for myself, I'm definitely practicing a lot of kindness for myself. And that's for myself. If I'm kind to other people, I'm really being kind to myself. And so I want to be kind to myself, and I want to pass the kindness on. So with that, with making the list, after I did that, and I decided to already have some of um, my project made today um, to show you how I did it, I first decided what color of background I use. You can use any, any form of paper. If you do not have construction paper available to you, you can just use white computer paper. Uh, if you have construction paper available, you can definitely pick whatever color choices that you would like to use. Um, I also use, oh, what is it, like scrapbooking paper that comes in very different uh, forms of styles and colors and so these are the things that I had available to me to be able to create this while I'm at home um, and I, I have kids myself so I have these things available they're pretty basic for art supplies and again that's why I started um, other supplies that you will need besides the paper are some kind of marker sharpie even though all you have is a pencil or crayons that definitely works there is no wrong way to do this project 
Um, you will also need uh, scissors and a glue stick or any other form of glue. And that is if you choose to do the flower. If not, like I said, there are other samples. Uh, so with that, with, with starting with the flower, I personally work by templates. You can free draw it. You can even rip the paper if you want to create your petals. There is no wrong way to do this. So what I did was I first made a template and then I traced the template onto the paper colors that I wanted. Just put it down and followed the outline. I can do that real quick just to show how simple and easy it is. And you just trace your template and then when it comes time to cut, you just cut your petal right out and it will end up looking something like this. After the petals are cut and they are made, what I did was I took the words from my list and I wrote them on the petals. Now again, if this is something that you don't wanna do, I don't wanna do a flower, that's totally okay. What you can do, what I chose to do, just as a suggestion, is let the magazine words talk for me. If you do not have magazines available to you, you can use newspaper, you can write them yourself. This does not have to be an actual drawing. Um, so with this, I even, these words are even a little bit different from what my list is, but it's along the same theme because I couldn't find the exact words, but it's still the same point and purpose. So, and again, this is the one that is a drawing and the words of what their, her needs are, are written around the character. So again, I just want you to know that there's so much freedom in creating, um, especially when you see me and I'm here to share art from the heart with you. There is never a wrong way to do it. As long as you're doing it, you're doing it. And with art, that is the true freedom. And right now with what we're going through, um, I find art to be very therapeutic because there is so much freedom in art. I am in control of it. I get to say how it looks. I get to decide what I want to put. And so with that, this is something that I get to control right now. And sometimes I need to control things. So with that, with that being said, um, after I listed out the words on the flower or on the petals, I took the petals and I just grabbed a glue stick very simple and easy. After I cut them out, grab the glue stick, just apply the glue, and decided to put the petals on. Now, I do have a circle in the middle just to give me a general idea of where my flower is going to be, because this is the type of art that I do. I kind of need it thought out and planned, but again, it doesn't have to be this way. I also decided to cut a stem. Um, if you want to draw it, paint, oh, and paint. I didn't even say that. You can totally paint this flower, even if it's just on regular paper, use watercolors, acrylic, oil, pastels, chalk, however you want to create and design this, this is where you have the freedom to do so. So for me and my style, I definitely had it more drawn out. And so I glued the petals down. So I'm just gonna go around really quick and complete this. And I kind of laid this out first as well, just to see what it would look like. And I didn't like how far spread out my petals were. I was like, oh, I don't really like that. So I um, decided to cut a center cover for my petals, which I will also be putting on. If you have glitter, glitter glue, um, feathers, rhinestones, the little pom-pom balls, anything that you have, please feel free to go for it and decorate it and really create this and make it your own. And remember sticking to the point and the purpose, it's all about what do I need right now? What, what, what are my needs right now? Because right now we are all having needs. We may have even different needs right now than we had three, four weeks ago before everything happened. And it's okay to recognize that and to notice that. And it's okay to find safe ways to fulfill those needs. It is, oh, it is okay to do that. So with that, I finished the petals and then I glued the center, which I just did a rough cut of a circle. Nothing um, super fancy here. And then this is how my personal needs flower ended up. If you are doing this with younger uh, kids, it is great 
uh, to sit down. It's a great time to sit down and talk to them about what their needs are. I find it that teens, um, definitely when this teen made hers, she did not want me around. She didn't want me anywhere near her and that is okay. Um, I do find doing this, I do it with grades K through 12 and I do find 99% um, of the time, teens want to be able to express in their own way on their own time and that is totally okay and accepted. And I appreciate it when they vocalize that with me and communicate that with me. And so with it being done, like this for mine. This is mine. My art is my art and your art will look like your art and that's perfect and okay. Um, I'm also going to just choose to decorate it. I didn't bring any glitter or anything with me today. I kept it pretty simple, but you can choose to create and design this any way that you want. And I'm just gonna make some swirls and some dots Nothing over the top, nothing elaborate. Maybe you have a favorite character that you draw, a favorite design. Maybe you love to write uh, your words in bubble letters or even in a graffiti type of style, as long as it's on paper in a controlled area, that's definitely okay. Whatever it is for you and just looking within on what your needs are right now and just honoring them and accepting them and saying, hey, right now, I really need a hug, or I really just need people to understand how I feel right now. That is okay, or maybe we need food. I I don't know, maybe we need more sleep, less sleep. I don't know, maybe we're sleeping too much because we're home so much. I have no idea. But this is um, my personal needs flower. This is the activity that I brought today. So if you choose to make this creation in any way that you choose to create, again, there's no wrong way, please share it with us. I would love to see it. We would love to know how you choose to create, what your personal needs are right now. It is important and I would love to know and, and see that from you. You can share that on Instagram at hashtag Operation Stay Connected. And I would love to see what you come up with and what your art looks like. And that is it for today. Take care, TUSD, and I will see you next time on Art From The Heart, Art Time. Hi, Turlock Unified. This is Mr. Velasquez here from Dutcher Middle School. We're going to go over a couple of exercises for you guys to do at home. Again, we're only using a couple of uh, feet or a small area for your workout, okay? We're not going to use weights. We're just going to do a body workout today, okay? We're going to start with our warm-up, which is going to be arm stretches. Right arm across, you're going to count to 10, you can play music in the background if you like, and start your stretches. Ready? Begin. Again, count to 10, or play some music, and then you're going to switch, okay, we're going to bring our right arm behind our head, and we're going to pull with our other hand down on the elbow. Switch. We're gonna do our leg warm ups, our stretches, ready? Flamingo stretch, we're gonna hold. Again, if you're balancing that good, make sure you hold on to the couch, hold on to the wall, or hold on to your uh, brothers or sisters if they're working out together. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and switch it. Make sure you hold that for about 10 seconds, but if you feel that stretch, Now we're going to try to touch our toes. If you, do, if you can't reach your toes, go down and touch your knee, or try to reach as far as down as you can. Okay. Feet apart, and hopefully you're following and doing it, doing it, and one more with me as well. Okay. So I'm holding it for about 10 seconds. Keep it up. Switch over to the left. Okay, hold it. Keep going. That hamstring stretch. Have your knees, and your leg. And down to the middle. Okay. Just hold it. If you're able to reach, that's great. If you can't reach, just kind of try to touch the floor. 
if you reach without any problem, just try to put your problems down or make it this, then reach with your fist. Make sure you're getting that good stretch. Okay, so today we're gonna start with a cardio warm up. We're gonna run in place. We're not gonna run around the house. We're just gonna stay in one place and run for about 30 seconds. Again, if you have music at home, play the music. It'll be a lot much, a lot faster and fun if you play that music. Ready? So we're gonna run in place for 30 seconds. Okay, so just pump your arms. I'm gonna go sideways, pump your arms, bring your knees, bend your knees when you're running. Okay, I'm counting my head. Okay, this is your cardio part of the day. Run in place. We're gonna switch to heel kicks, which is gonna bring your heels over and high for about 30 seconds as well. Okay, I have my hand just, that way I make sure I touch my heels and bring them up high enough, all right? By this time, you should be already starting to breathe a little bit faster. Your heart rate's going up. That's what we want, okay? We're gonna do high knees in place for 30 seconds. I have my knees up. Make sure my knees come up high. All right, we're ready for a for workout today. Again, three to four sets of the following exercises. I'm gonna demonstrate the exercise and then I'm gonna do my set, okay? Before we start though, take a little break. Drink water and get ready for it, okay? So we're gonna start with sit-ups. We're gonna go down to the floor, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate first. I'm gonna demonstrate two of them. Make sure your hands are either on the floor or crossed. I like to have them crossed, okay? Ready? So you yourself up and you go all the way down. Make sure your feet stay down, okay? So you're gonna do 10 of those, all right? That's how you do sit-ups. I'm gonna do my 10 and then I'm gonna move on to the next exercise. Ready? All right, we're gonna start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, the next exercise is gonna be squats. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate two of them and then you're gonna go ahead and do them with me, all right? So, sideways on, you're gonna have your feet as wide as your shoulders. This athletic stance, ready? We're gonna go down and up. Okay, that's the front view. Now this is the side view. Down and up, okay? Ready, we're gonna start our set. We're gonna do 10 of them. Okay, do them with me. One, down, up, two, down, up, three, down, up, four, down, up, five, down, up, six, down, up, seven, down, up, eight, down, up, nine, down, up, 10. All right, the next one's gonna be same exercise, but now we're gonna add a jump to it. So they call called jump squats, okay? Same thing, demonstrating two, and then you follow and do it with me as well, okay? So, I'm gonna show you the side view, okay? You go down, okay? I'm gonna have my hands on the side, and you jump, okay? So that's one. Okay, I'm gonna show you the front view. Ready, you go down, and you go up. Okay, try to get up as high as you can. When you land, make sure you land soft. Okay, go from your toes down all the way to your heels and back up, okay? So ready? Okay, down, jump. One, down, jump. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we're gonna continue our workout. Next one's gonna be Forward lunges, okay? I'm gonna show you the front view, and then I'm gonna go to the side view, and then we're gonna do them together, okay? So for lunges, you're gonna go step forward, down with the back leg, and push up, okay? Down, up, push back, okay? So you do one right, one left, that will be one, okay? You go to the side view, I'm gonna demonstrate with my right, and then with my left, okay? Go down, up, down, up, 
That'll be one. Okay, ready? All right, let's start. Down, up, down, up, one. Down, up, down, up, two. Down, up, down, up, three. Down, up, down, up, four. Down, up, down, up, five. Down, up, down, up, six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. All right, the last exercise of the day will be planks. Okay, I'm gonna go down the floor. I'm gonna show you both views, the front view and the side view. Okay, when you go down, you go down the floor, and there's two ways to do them. You can do a push-up plank, or just a regular plank, okay? You hold those for 10 seconds. So the way you're gonna do it, you just go on your elbows, make sure your back is straight, as straight as you can, go on your toes, okay? Don't put your feet sideways. Make sure they stay strong, and you hold it for 10 seconds, okay? Now, this is the side view, okay? Make sure your back is straight. Don't go up, don't go down. Keep it as straight as you can for 10 seconds. Okay, so ready? We're gonna do them together. Okay? Let's start. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, those are our five exercises for today. Now I want you guys to continue your workout. Do two to three sets of those today, okay? As you see, I'm already sweating. You should be sweating as well. Take a quick break, two to three minutes, and get back into it, okay? Good luck. Turlock High School. I want to talk to you today about some important things you need to know about resumes, what they are, why you need one, and how to make one. A resume is a document that sums up a job seeker's qualifications for the jobs they're interested in. The purpose is to summarize your skills, abilities, and qualifications and accomplishments, help you get a job, and stand out from the competition. If you've never made a resume before, you might not know everything that goes into it. Let's go talk to some students and see what they think resumes are. Hi, my name is Luis Lopez, and today we're going to ask students what goes on a resume. Well, what goes on a resume is mostly like stuff like um, what have you done, what is your work experience, what skills do you have. Do you like put your degree and your information of like school and stuff on it? Um, your qualities, your name, your job, what you are looking for in a job. Uh, maybe previous work experience and uh, volunteer work so they kind of know your characteristics. Your education, how long you've been in school, um, your previous employer. Um, any school activities that you do because it just shows that like, you're involved, like you care. Uh, I think maybe your grades too because it just shows that you're dedicated, you have a good work, work ethic background information, achievements, possible previous jobs, or anything that demonstrates experience and capabilities that will help you gain this job. What should be included on a resume? At the top of the page, you want to start with your name and contact information. Make sure that your name really stands out at the top of the paper. Then put all of your pertinent contact information, such as address, phone number, and email address, so that a potential employer can contact you. Make sure to use your personal email rather than your school email and make sure it's appropriate. For education, list the name of the school and the city it's located in, as well as the years attended. Feel free to list your GPA if it's over a 3.0 and any specialty courses you might have taken, especially if they're related to the job you're applying for. If you've taken college classes, that's excellent. Make sure you include that as well with the school name, the course title, and the dates you went. One section you want to include is going to be your previous experience. You may not have any job experience, so you might not think you have something to put down, but I bet you do. 
Try and think of any work that you've done before, whether it's part-time, full-time, or self-employment. Self-employment could be things like babysitting, chores, yard work, or anything else that you've been paid for, or maybe that you just did for the experience. List the date range, the location, and all of the duties and accomplishments that you were able to perform. Another section you can include would be activities and extracurriculars. Think about teams, clubs, and sports, as well as community service organizations. Have you ever volunteered? Do you have leadership skills? Or have you worked in a team? All of these things look great on a resume and give you additional experience to list. Include the organization name and the date, as well as all of the things you did and accomplishments you achieved. Another section you want to include is your skills. Think of your soft skills, like leadership, communication, and teamwork. And think of your hard skills, like Adobe, Microsoft, welding, cooking, those types of things, especially when they're related to the job you're applying for. Some additional information you'll want to include will be accomplishments and awards that you've received. Do you have your seal of biliteracy? Have you received perfect attendance awards before? Are you in honors courses? Those are great things to include that really help you stand out for a potential employer to see. As a newbie to the resume world, you're also going to want to include references. References are people that can speak to your character and your experience and tell a potential employer a little bit more about you. Don't include your family or your friends, but do include people that can actually speak about what they know from you. Teachers, administrators, coaches, community leaders, and the like. Make sure you ask their permission or notify them before you list them as a reference. When it comes to formatting your resume, you want to make sure that it's going to be legible. Don't use any scripty fonts and nothing too bold or fancy. Try and keep your font size between 11 and 12, and don't make it too colorful or crazy looking. Keep your formatting simple and clean. Check your spelling, and make sure that you have all the necessary information for them to contact you. Still not sure why you need a resume? Let's go ask some other people and see what we can find out. So why do students need resumes? Um, to really like show the job employer like what they're capable of and like how the grades were to, to really show how they are going to be in the, what's it called? Because mainly employers want to see what you can do and, and what your skills are, so you just want to highlight those things. You need a resume to, you know, get jobs, further, further assure your employers who, of who you are and what you know and what you have done. Basically to imply or to show your, your employer, future employer, basically all your skills you need and um, kind of like a template to show what you have to offer. Well, students need resumes because it gives whatever they're doing, whether they're a future employer or uh, they're applying to colleges, it gives them the background and the information that you are selling yourself to them on. I hope you were able to get some important information that will help you in the future. Thanks for watching, and hopefully now you're ready to make your own awesome resume.